Hello, Internet, and welcome back to our coverage of Indie PopCon 2019. And we are hanging out with the lovely folks from Knights of Yore, which we ran into last year. Um, yes. So it's good to see you guys again. It's good a wonderful to see you time. Too. Uh, can we talk a little bit of kind of what has changed since last year? You guys were very early on in development last year uh, with the game, and I noticed a few UI changes when we played. Uh, talk a little bit about where we are and what kind of the roadmap is going forward. Excellent. Yeah, the uh, last year, the big thing that we showed everybody was our new player app that we had kind of rebooted, and uh, we were kind of improvising on the tabletop display and what the, what Borden was doing behind the scenes as a storyteller. Uh, this year, we took all that feedback we got from everybody on the player app and tweaked it a little bit, uh, cleaned things up, made it a little easier to read, a little more user usability, uh, the user X, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, this year, we put a big focus on Storyteller. Mm -hmm. uh, so you saw new splash screens on our tabletop, uh, new battlefields so for visualizing what's going on in battle. And then also, uh, he has a whole tool set to his disposal, uh, a dice bag with coins that he can flip, um, a turn order for all those mechanisms in battle, uh, as well as uh, displaying all the splash screens and everything that he might need to display during the during all, the fight. All digital, of course, on the app. You know, no physical dice or coins or anything mm -hmm. like that necessary. Uh, you just fire up the app and there you go. Can we talk a little bit, because the all digital aspect to me is the cool part. So you have basically three different displays that each game or the game has. You have the player display, which is what we run on the phones. You have the I call it the viewer display. I don't know what you guys call yeah, it. Tabletop app. Yeah, the tabletop display. And then you have the dungeon master or the game master display. Um, what was the thought process behind having all three of those separately? Because we were talking, we use for D&D, &D, our campaign, we use Roll20. But you have to view it from my display, which is as a player, which is not necessarily the greatest. And I also want to point out, the only reason we started our Dungeons & Dragons campaign is because I played Knights of Yore last year at Indie PopCon for like, uh, probably it was like 40 minutes or an hour or something. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, I did it again this year. Uh, and that's why I was like, ooh, this is actually a lot of fun, because I'm like, what, nerds? Cause I'm a, <laughs> yes, I'm, we are. Yeah, because <laughs> yes. I have not become a nerd till later on in life. But talk a little bit about the, the having the three different displays, what the purpose of them are, or what the purpose of them is, and kind of why you did the three different ones. Yeah, absolutely. The um, uh, We wanted to create a very accessible experience for everybody, and just about everybody has a phone, a uh, smartphone, and everybody has a TV, mm -hmm. just about. Uh, so or a just monitor of some sort. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we figured um, by by having a, uh, a character app in your phone, that's something everybody has. Download an app, you're ready to go as far as a character goes. Mm -hmm. uh, for the tabletop, TV just makes sense. Uh, th that that will either end up being an app or possibly just a website that you tune into. Uh, the website might actually be easier. We've been kind of discussing that, mm -hmm. uh, so that way anybody could tune in potentially. Um, and then the Storyteller app, we do want to use a tablet for that because it'll give you a little more screen space for all the different tools that you're going to need. Uh, but again, you can buy cheap Android tablets for like mm -hmm. 50 bucks, so you're good to go there. And it's a minimal investment if you don't already have those things. Uh, whereas, you know, a lot of the other tabletop systems can cost a lot of money to get. I know for us going. for Roll20, we, we spent 60 bucks a year on the subscription and then every other thing you add to it is more money. So every module, every like Xanathar's Guide we bought for like 30 or 40 and it just adds yeah. up over time. Um, I'm actually going to turn it over to you because you played for the first time this weekend. Is this your first time ever playing a role playing game at all? Yeah, this is the first time ever playing like a tabletop game for me, like a role play. So I want you to discuss with him about what happened during this and kind of just see, because uh, this is a true first impression, because you played the role playing game a little differently than I think than the average person. So I'm going to let you take it over and have a, have a little discussion about that. Okay. Do I get to hold the mic? Oh, wow. I feel fancy. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was my first time playing the game and I've been like trying to get into the D&D &D world and everything like that. I've got like some campaigns in the works with a couple of friends of mine and this was a really nice like, here you go, kiddo, kind of way to do it. It, and I, I went as far as I possibly could with the game and made sure to make you almost cry as you, a game developer. You, you definitely did several things that uh, no one else has done this weekend. Um, as, a, as a storyteller, I am accustomed to some zaniness. You did a in, great uh, job. Some zaniness in my players, like that's pretty normal. Uh, I will say that you managed to crank it up to 11. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job. She made out with a character. <laughs> I did a great job at it, too. In the middle of mm. combat. <laughs> <laughs> 
And yes, I did allow it. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. I was going to say, from from a uh, Game Master standpoint, when you have a player like Claire in that sense, how do you go through your head and how do you like, okay, I'm going to... I need to continue the story, but I also need to let them do what they want to do. How do I you would like to apologize. <laughs> so, <Never> apologize. <laughs> so the way I look at things is every the world is the world. The world is a living, breathing place. Uh, I try and know and internalize what my NPC's motivations are. Um, and from there, you tell me what you're going to do. I know what the NPC's reactions will be just based on how they live, what they want out of life, that sort of thing, like a normal person. Yeah. And from there, that's why we have dice. That's why we have uh, random number generators. So I can say, okay, if you want to throw yourself at this individual in the middle of combat, you know, that's going to be determined by your agility, where the point of his sword happens to be in space at this very <laughs> moment in time. And, uh, you know, we'll roll some luck percentages, we'll roll some ability rolls, just to see how good you are at avoiding that I wavering. wasn't good. I wasn't yeah. good at all. Yeah. <laughs> last night you were. Last night you hit a... I think that, that's... And it's funny because last night we did a campaign, she got through very quickly because she got some good rolls, and that's why this time when we played, I kind of was like, I'm going to see what happens here because I know... <laughs> I've, I've, I've done, what, five games, I think? Four or five uh, yeah, games you, at this you point? Yeah, you run through scenarios I, probably yes, four or five times. Yeah. 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 So I was, I was interested to see what she was going to do and what you were going to do because I knew how she was going to react. After yeah. every game, I would ask, has anyone else done this? And you go, no. <laughs> and I'm like, yay. Yep, I, I got to say, though, my favorite last night was the instant we started the scenario, you walked into a room and just said, I want to burn it. I did. There was paper everywhere. <laughs> and I wasn't certain if you wanted to burn the room or the papers or the desk or your companion. You just said, oh, I everything. want to burn it. Oh, everything. I, I was like... <laughs> Okay, and in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, how is this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. You knew what I wanted to do. You're like, okay, there's a long piece of paper. You want to burn that? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that you have taken the art, all of our arts done in-house, but you looked at what was there <laughs> and available, and you made decisions based on that, which also nobody else has done. In the game so we far. played today, there was a window, and I was like, can I break it? And you go... Yeah, and I'm like, awesome. You broke into somebody's house. I stole bread. And knives. And yes. knives. Yes, I didn't kill did. her, though. I wanted to, but I didn't. <laughs> hey, role playing's all about doing the things you can't do. Keegan took life. me away. Yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, took away your mic. Uh, so, question for you is, as a, as a game master, as a dungeon master, whatever, what do you, what's your term for it? So, for Knights of Yore, we call them storytellers. Storytellers, as a storyteller. Um, what... What kind of prep would you have to go into when you come into a campaign of something like this? Because obviously the, for the for the con, they're all preset modules. They're yes. relatively short to go through pretty quickly. But when you're doing a full campaign, per se, mm -hmm. are you going to have like a four or five hour campaign is, module? Is it going to be like, can they intertwine? How's that going to work? So Knights of Yore is tabletop role playing. Mm -hmm. The only thing is it's streamlined. We use 21st century technology to simply make it easier for storytellers and players to do what they would normally do. So uh, I spent a couple of hours cutting things out, narrowing things down to about a 15 to 20 minute chunk of content, barring the uh, decisions of player characters and players themselves. It makes it go 40 minutes. <laughs> 40, I have fun. That's the most Which, important part. That's, that's the important part, having fun. Uh, so with Knights of Yore, uh, it's just like any other tabletop RPG. Mm -hmm. You can have a 15 to 20 minute chunk of content, or you can have a full four hour session. The only thing that we would recommend, that I would recommend for storytellers, is to bear in mind that uh, four hours of content for Knights of Yore is going to be a significantly larger chunk of content than four hours with a pen and paper game, simply because all of the dice rolling happens Instantly. immediately. So, whereas normally you can account for about, we'll say 45 minutes per session of mm -hmm. that content, just being dice rolling and adding up figures and deciding on rules, all of that's taken care of in the background, so storytellers should be prepared for that uh, when they're preparing their adventures. And one of the big things with other role-playing games is homebrew, the ability to tweak it to what you would like. Is, the, is there going to be the ability to do that with Knights of Yore? Yes, very much so. Uh, the idea is that we don't want to take anything away from the storytellers that they would normally be able to do in another 
RPG. We don't want to give them uh, limitations like you can only do this, you can only do that. Homebrew it. It's a, it's a simple system. We've cut it down as much as possible. That way, um, the combat system's hard set. Every, all the dice mm -hmm. are rolled. But beyond that, when you're preparing your content, if you need a new piece of equipment, make a new piece of equipment. If you want its stats to be this or that or the other, make it stats, this or that or the other. Uh, if you want an NPC that is a uh, halfling but a knight and is wearing heavy armor and carrying a two-handed broadsword that's bigger than she is. Sounds like the Elder Scrolls mentality with like ESO or uh, Elder Scrolls Online where like your class and race don't really matter. If you're min-maxing, they do, but if you're role-playing, who cares? Yeah, exactly, exactly, and that's that's kind of the goal. Anything that a, a game master in another tabletop RPG would be able to do, just sitting there, thinking at night, as they're preparing, coming up with new stuff, new content to throw at their players to either make them go, ooh, or ah, uh, we want you to be able to do that with Knights of Yore. So outside of Clara, because <laughs> clearly she is the... Uh the craziest one this weekend. What's well, can it? I say something really quick for a person who like played a D and D game, like kind of Knights of Yore for the first time. Role playing, or tabletop role playing yeah, like game. Role playing tabletop game. It was really easy to get the hang of. Like I just had to click a couple buttons. I already knew my stats, and you told me exactly what to click, and you were able to make a story out of it. And I really loved that. It didn't confuse me at all, which is what I always think of when Excellent. I think of D and D. It's like that's confusing. With Knights of Yore, it was like. You're in, let's go. And I'm like, okay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's exactly what we want. Yeah, I loved it. And at the con, you're auto-generating characters. So would scroll, she would scroll through until she found a chaotic one that she could play. <laughs> like, I want to be chaotic. Like, you're not going to look at race in class? now. I want chaotic. Yep. Um, I forgot what my question was now. That's okay. Oh, that's fine. Some, I was Something about other than Claire. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah other than Claire. What, what is the craziest moment this weekend that somebody has done? <laughs> Because she, I think she went for burning down the built or burning down the house, um, <laughs> and breaking into a house and stealing bread and knives and craziest and moment over the course of the weekend, I think. Because I'm sure you get way more serious players, you get way more lax uh, players oh, at, at an event like this. Most definitely, you, like, yeah. Actually, want to win, and I'm like, I want to burn it. And, yeah. uh, I was yesterday. I was like, Hey, we, we're here for a book. Yeah. I think the, oh, Frick, you right. Uh, aside from you, who definitely topped the charts, uh, the other craziest thing that's happened so far is I had a couple come up and played through the same dungeon scenario. Okay. They found the big monster in there, and one of them left the other for dead. I tried to do that, but I couldn't escape. Yeah, you did yeah. that. You freaking did that. Yeah. Not, not you. She's mad at me. Yeah, you, you tried that. Another, I tried that with another, another group. Another group actually did it. Yeah, because I kept running into the monsters. I go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. stuck. One thing about the, um, that was kind of a nice thing to see this time around was that uh, some of these battles were not, very tested mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, some of them yeah mm -hmm. some of them uh, Borden had to improvise a little bit on uh, making things a little squishier uh, but a lot of them we were able to play them as the system dictated yes. and everything worked out fine uh, the the demon in the book scenario was a very difficult uh, enemy and we destroyed it during ours yeah and even, even with four player characters for some people it was a real struggle uh, but we had all kinds of different scenarios where we had you know two people fighting it, four people fighting it. Uh, we had an ambush attack on it at one point where one person was on the other side of the door getting ready to leave the party, <laughs> and then the demon appears. Yeah, yeah, uh, so we had a, it, has, it was actually flanked. <clears throat> the system allows for it. It lets it play out that way. It changes the strategy, uh, even though it's not a movement-based battle system. So that was really interesting, seeing how all that stuff played out and everybody's uh, different ways of going about it, and then how Borden was able to actually implement it in real time. I'm very used to like being told no in a game where it's like you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Every time I was like, "Can I do this?" He was like, "Yep." And I'm like, "Great." Yeah, and that's that's a big part of uh, the the system is um, we created a a very a pretty straightforward battle system that, you know, so you know what to expect out of that. Uh, sort of the strategy that everybody tends to implement and can throw other people off. Um, but outside of that, we didn't create any rules. There's no rule book it's for the, Knights it's of the, Yore. It's the storyteller's decision on what happens. Completely, yeah. So that, that way, you know, people, a lot of people ask, like, hey, can I do this with D&D? Can I do this with Pathfinder? It's like, well, you can storytell it however you want. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, and there's, we have different stats and things that you're basing your roles off of, but those, it's whatever makes sense for the storyteller to base that decision off of. Yeah. So, and... And in fact, 
if you uh, take a look somewhere in most other tabletop RPGs, it will tell you the Game Master has the final say on any ruling. Make it your own. And every RPG out there encourages it, and Knights of Yours no different. It's mm -hmm. just all set up so that the game is as open-ended as it can possibly be. Literally, your imagination is the only uh, limit. Limit. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so let's talk about the future of Knights of Yore. What's what's the roadmap look like uh, next year or so? What can we expect from you guys? Yeah, so our plan uh, is to finish uh, making some tweaks to our Storyteller app based on what we learned from the cons this weekend. How much feedback did you get this weekend? Tons. <laughs> and uh, and I'm sh he's got all the notes on yeah. the things that he wants to change about what we developed for our Storyteller app as well. Um, and a lot a lot of people came behind the screen and got to see what was going on there. So It's really cool because I sat behind during one of the sessions. I was like, oh, that, and it's simple. Yeah. That's the thing that got me, because like our DM right now, one of the biggest complaints he has is he has to have like he he's like I need like six monitors to run our campaign, mm -hmm. and it sucks. Right. Like you're running it on right now one screen. Obviously these are simplified right. modules you're doing, but right. but that that to me was like oh this is I know my DM would love that. Yeah, well, I mean, it, we, we kept the tool set simple for this storyteller. It's, it's really prioritizing things. Mm -hmm. So we've got our turn order bar. We've got our areas that you're going to go to. Uh, you've got a dice bag with a coin flip in there. Uh, you've got, but the, the big thing for me is uh, you, you can pull up all the NPCs and mm -hmm. monsters and see a full character sheet and roll all of their stats mm -hmm. and keep track of their hit points and ability points uh, in real time. And you can not only see the person that's up currently, but preview somebody else if you need to affect something for them as well. Mm -hmm. So that makes uh, that kind of simplifies a lot of the stuff that you end up needing multiple books or monitors mm -hmm. going around, going on for. Yeah. Uh, long term, uh, focusing on storyteller app, uh, flushing out our battle system so that it actually is uh, networking is one of our big things we're working on currently mm -hmm. uh, to get everything talking to each other. That is going to exponentially speed things mm -hmm. up when you can watch the battles happen in real time, it, it, not waiting on relaying any math whatsoever. Well, Claire did a so I gave Claire a potion and it didn't go through because it's not networked. But then she did a right. self heal and it just automatically does it. And yeah. eventually, once that comes, like, hey, give it to somebody else and it just does it. You're like, oh, we're done. Done. Turn yeah. over. Turn Choose over. what you want to do. It. Pick your target. Yeah. Execute. Move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing is the storyteller does still have control over the turn order when it progresses in battle. So that leaves room to have those improvised moments in battle where it's not just fight, 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 fight. Mm -hmm. You can say, hey, you know what? I want to try to talk these guys out of the fight at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can still, we can still allow for that, which is that huge tabletop aspect where it's not just a video game at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but the, uh, yeah, so networking, flushing out the storyteller app. Flushing out our tabletop app. Those are the next big three things. And then our plan is once we have that done, uh, hopefully next year we can launch our beta mm -hmm. uh, where we can actually get it in the hands of people and say, hey, go home and play this. Go break this. Yeah, exactly. Go break it. <laughs> tell, us break what it. You, tell us what you did. Send us the report. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'll be playing with her a lot. Yeah. So uh, and then and then we'll probably do just a bunch of pre-made modules for that purpose. Uh, probably ten or twelve. We'll try to put in the hands of everybody to mm -hmm. try it out, try different scenarios, give us all the feedback, and then we can spend the next amount of time after that working through those things, mm -hmm. uh, developing our homebrew system where you can build your own campaigns or procedurally generate one as well, and then that will be when we're ready to launch. Sounds exciting. I'm excited to work. We find you guys on the web, on social media, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Those plugs. Uh, Knights of Your Game at everything. At everything. So uh, it's, I don't think at everything is a website. Yeah, it might be, yeah. actually. It might, maybe, yeah. <laughs> but we're not, if you go to knightsofyour.com, mm -hmm. uh, all of our social media links are at the top. We do actually have a SoundCloud with some of the music we've been kicking around. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to drastically change soon. Uh, we do have, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Tumblr. Our website actually is just our Tumblr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And a quick note, it is Knights of Yours, spelled N-I-G-H-T, not K-N-I. Took me a second to find you guys last year after that. Yeah, yeah, it is a little bit confusing, but we like plays on words. Can you, and I was going to say, can you explain the, the Knights of Your name? Because you told me what it was. Yeah, so, yeah. So just so they know. The, one of the things about role playing that got me really excited uh, is what we were doing last night and, and it's like when I started when I actually finally got around to being able to start role playing games and tabletop games uh, I had such a good time with it and what I found myself doing all the time was talking about hey remember that one time when Zoltar you know destroyed you know Cthulhu or whatever he tried to stomp on you and you stopped him with a finger yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I rolled, a, I rolled a crit and yeah. you know stopped it somehow game, I was like you won't believe what I did in Knights of Yore and they're yeah. like okay 
Exactly. You punched your fist through a desk. <laughs> so. so that's what it's all about. You know, it's like you have these great stories to tell. Mm -hmm. So the nights of yours, reflecting on those nights of, you know, getting together, mm -hmm. playing an awesome game, having an adventure, and telling all your people about it and getting them excited. And so hopefully what this game does is makes it that much easier for people that have never played or want to play more often be able to do that and have more of those nights. Cool. But thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Keegan at IndiePopCon 2019. And this is Knights of Your. Go check him out. KnightsofYour.com.